Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've got an update on my Unihertz Atom XL phone that I reviewed the other day. There was a lot of interest in this. This actually got a lot of views on my channel. And a lot of hams wrote in asking some questions about what you can configure on it, so I thought I would talk about that. Now, if you missed the original review, this is a smartphone that also has a built-in walkie-talkie function that works over regular radio frequencies. So if you have somebody who has a handheld radio, you can communicate with them through this without having to go over the cellular network. And if you have an amateur radio license like I do, you can use it to connect to repeaters in addition to just communicating one-on-one -on -one with somebody who has another radio. And in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the features that ham radio operators might be interested in to see if this phone might be able to accomplish some things that you might be looking for. Now, before we get into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the phone came in free of charge from Unihertz. However, they are not paying for this review nor are they reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and explore some of the ham radio specific features of the Unihertz Atom XL. Now, first things first here, this phone only communicates over the 70 centimeter band, and as I pointed out in the video, it will allow you to go out of band, so you wanna be very careful about how you configure everything. The antenna, as you can see here, is removable, and this antenna is just for that radio function, the walkie-talkie function. And as you can also see, it has a male SMA connector here at the top, so you could use another antenna if you want, like a survival antenna or something like that. I'm just going to screw the included one back on. Now, as we explored in the original video, the app that it uses for the radio function is called Intercom, and this is where you can communicate with other radios or through repeaters. Now, right now I have it set to my local DMR repeater. And what I'll do here is go into the edit function so you can see all of the different setting options that I had available to me when I set it up. And what I'm gonna do is actually bring in uh, this page here from the repeater book so you can see what my local settings are. Now, there is one error in repeater book about the, the repeater that I use. As you can see, it says plus five megahertz, but that would put us out of band for amateur radio. So it's actually minus five megahertz. So if we look at my send frequency, you can see that is set to 440 and not 450 because it is minus five of the downlink here. So we've got uplink properly set to 4407375000 and the receive frequency is at the same one that we have on repeater book. Uh, the power refers to how much transmit power it will use. This will do about a maximum of two watts. So high power is two watts and it's got uh, messages coming in. Uh, low power is uh, I think 0.5 watts. Color code here is going to line up here with color code on my repeater book for the DMR settings there. The uh, double slot here allows you to select which of the two slots it can use. And somebody did ask a question if it was using both slots or you could choose them. And as you can see, this one is on slot one, which is what my uh, local repeater uses here. So I have that set there, but you could also go into direct mode if you wanted to communicate directly with another radio. I have my contact type set to group. And if we go over to the groups available on this one, you can see that I have mine set to the uh, parrot mode here, which is 9998. And I use that just to kind of see if my audio is being received and sent back by the local repeater. But I could also connect to any of the other uh, talk groups that they have on that one. And if we keep scrolling down here, you can see some of the other settings that they've got. And I can also set additional groups here at the bottom if I wanted to have something I can switch to quickly there. So that is a DMR channel. And as I demonstrated in the original video, uh, this worked just fine. I was able to hit that repeater about a mile and a half away. I had to be out on my back deck in order to get to it, but it was able to spit back the DMR audio that I was transmitting from the radio here. Now, when you're using a DMR repeater, you also need a DMR radio ID, and that is set in the device section here. And if you go over to setting, 
and tap on device ID, you can type in the ID number that you have assigned to your call sign. So my uh, call sign is KC1RGS and uh, my device ID from radioid.net is 3191727. So when I go out on a DMR network, all of my information will come back properly. So now that we've seen the DMR settings, let's take a look at analog settings now. All right, so right now I've got it set to an analog channel, and this is set right now to the national simplex frequency here in the U.S., which is 446 megahertz, according to the ARRL. And if I go back here to channel and just go in and edit this, uh, what you will see are all the options you have for analog communications. And if you wanted to use this with a repeater, you can just note that you can only transmit and receive on 70 centimeters, but if you have a repeater that's analog in uh, that band, you can access it. So right now, uh, both send and receive are the same here because we are, of course, on a simplex frequency here, but I could change that. You can also change it to a wide or narrow band for its communication here. Let me jump back into it. It's not the most intuitive interface here, but you can go wide or narrow on the communication. Just like before, we can set the power to high or to not so high. Uh, you also have some squelch levels here, and you could go to zero just to uh, hear the static all the time if you want, especially if you have a weak uh, signal that you're trying to pick up. Now, you also have the ability to uh, set tone here, and that includes CT, CSS, CD, CSS, and reverse CD, CSS, so you can uh, get at those repeaters that require those codes. Uh, this is on the receive side, but you can also do it on the send side as well. So you can see what your options are for communicating analog. And I think some of you might want to see the options you have for the tones that you might send out to a repeater. So let's jump back over here. And if we have it set uh, right now to CTCSS and we go over here, you can see all of the uh, different options you can set there, quite a few actually. And then if we do the other option here, CDCSS, you can also see what options you have there. So it looks pretty complete to me. I'm just a lowly technician here. I still have to get my general license, but I think for connecting to a repeater or just a simplex conversation, this will work fine for hams. And of course, you get the full Android smartphone as part of the deal as well. Now, if you're interested in learning more about this phone, I did do a full review of it, and that includes the walkie-talkie function and some audio samples along with its smartphone capabilities as well. So definitely check that out. I found it to be a very nicely constructed phone. It should survive quite well out in the elements, and it's kind of a nice way to combine two different devices into one. And I think it's very functional, especially for hams who want something that can communicate with other hams along with repeaters and other things. So all in, a really solid offering here from Unihertz. And that is gonna do it for this update video. 7-3 to all of you, and find me on the air at KC1RGS. Until next time, this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.